I think something that, that I'm sure you all hear and we hear a lot too is how do I find the right therapist? And does the right therapist matter? And, and maybe not therapist and mental health practitioner for whatever it is that one is going through. So Stacy, tell me a little bit about from your perspective, the importance of, um, as we call it, the therapeutic relationship. And also like, do you have any tips or recommendations for people as they are maybe starting their mental health wellness journey and like what to look for, how to navigate this oftentimes complex system with psychotherapists and psychiatrists and psychologists and mental health practitioners or whatever it is. So, so tell me a little bit about your thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really hard to navigate. I was just talking about this before the call. We're like, we're, we're, where I, um, my practice is a one-stop shop and I, and I have to say people call all the time and they don't know what they need. They just know they need help. And, you know, I, I'm, I have a lot of pride in knowing that we can help them sort that out, but a lot of people don't have that resource. Um, so, you know, I think that, hmm, it's a good question. I, you know, I think that you want to figure out what your issues are. Like, let's say you have drug and alcohol, you know, or behavioral addictions, then you want to find someone with a specialty in addiction. If you're dealing with sexuality, LGBTQ stuff, you want to find someone that, that specializes in that. And a lot of people will say they specialize in everything. <laughs> Um, a resource to kind of look for specialties is psychology today. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of different platforms like that. If you are a special interest group, if you're a musician, for example, then backline, right? Like, like there's different organizations out there that are getting their name out. Um, if, if you are a person of color, there may be organizations that have more therapists of color because there's just, it is important. I think the therapeutic connection and the relationship is really important. That's not to say that every therapist you have has to have gone through what you've gone through specifically. Um, but I, I think empathy is, is like the most valuable tool we all share, no matter what your letters are behind your name. <laughs> and you want to feel that that person has empathy and that you can connect to them. You want to feel comfortable with them. It's okay to, you may, you may be surprised. Like you may think you want a certain gender therapist and you may find out that, you know, that's not actually necessary. Um, but I think just the feel and the comfort at first is very important. And that first impression is actually important. And so sometimes it's just as simple. I'll tell patients, we'll have a conversation with them, but I'll also be like, look at the website and see who piques your interest. Look at the picture, read the review. You know, not that, not that it's always the same as, as it looks, um, but I think you want to get a feel for, for their style and their flavor, whether it's their website or whatnot. I think word of mouth is huge. Um, so if you have other professionals in your life that you trust that maybe have gotten therapy that can ask their therapist or, or you can ask your doctor if you have a doctor that you trust, because um, I, I think word of mouth is, is really big, which I may have mentioned before. I'm trying to think if there's any other. Tools. I want to just, I want to interject for one second and say that if anyone has any, if you don't know where to start, maybe you have a friend or a family member who has, has a therapist who has had a positive experience, ask them. Right. And something I always recommend to people, and something I do in my own personal practice too, is like, I'll get on the phone with people for 10, 15 minutes to hear about what's going on, to make sure that we have a connection or that I'm, you know, situated and suited to help with whatever it is they're going through. So I always recommend that someone call a therapist or email a therapist to see if they can just get on a quick consult call. Cause you'll know a lot in the first you know, two to five minutes on whether or not that's the right fit or fit for you or not. So, you know, okay. the more we can empower the, the individual's decision making and who they pick, I think the, the, the greater the, the results can be. And Haim, I'm curious, do you have any, like off the top of your head, I'm not, like research or, you know, um, understanding of what the relationship is like between a client and a therapist in you know the efficacy of the outcomes or the success of the outcomes in uh, in the relationship. So it's interesting. I mean, in some ways, this is you know one of the most researched topics in uh, right in the study of you know sort of psychology and therapy is looking at 
Like, what are the characteristics that define whether therapy is going to work for a person or not, right? And, and there's sort of the two camps, the one camp being, well, like, it's all about the type of therapy and the therapy. And it's, you know, if you take cognitive behavior therapy or, you know, exposure and response prevention for, uh, you know, treating OCD. And it's like, doesn't matter who delivers it. It's like that therapy works, right? And then there's the other camp in the other extreme, which says like, it doesn't matter what type of therapy you use. It just matters who your therapist is. And if you have a good connection and the therapeutic relationship and you feel like you bond with that person and, and they understand you and they listen to you and they don't judge you, right? And those are really like in the relationship piece, it's that you feel a connection to them, you feel safe and comfortable opening up to them, right? And you feel that you're not judged for anything you say and you feel like they hold the space to listen to you. Right. And it's like, and then if, you know, so the other camp says if like, if all those things are there, it kind of doesn't matter what type of therapy um, they actually use. And the answer, like everything else in the universe is probably somewhere in the middle, right. Where uh, probably they both matter. And ideally what you want is a therapist that you feel a connection with and that you feel comfortable with in all of those ways and safe with. And then at the same time, who has a plan you know, is able to present like, here's what we're going to do. Here's why we're taking this particular approach. Here's how this approach helps address the type of issue that you're going through, right? And typically you want to hear something like that. And I get worried when I hear people tell me stories about, you know, I'm seeing this therapist and I really don't connect to them at all. And I'm just forcing myself to go and I'm afraid to speak. Or I'm scared of my therapist and I'm, I'm scared to tell them that I'm having a rough time. It's like, uh-oh. You know, so you want to feel good. And then I also sort of cringe when I hear the other way where they're like, yeah, I love my therapist. And, and I just go and then we just like sit there every week and just talk about my life and, you know, just, hey, how's it going? And I just say, here's how my week was. And we never actually move anything forward and we never work on any of the symptoms or on any of the particular things that are underlying what I'm struggling with. And we just kind of chat. And I'm like, you know, that's also maybe not great. And you want a little bit of that balance of both feeling comfortable, but also having a plan and a direction and a framework and an approach to help actually move things forward.